Hey everyone, welcome to part, I think it's like six, of my in-depth review of the new Dark Angels Codex, which came out today. As always, my name is Jay. And in this video, I'll be going over the fast attack choices and the formations that are attached to the fast attack choices. Um, most of the formations actually are involving fast attack choices. So that's pretty cool. So, uh, to sum up the fast attack choices ahead of time, not a lot of point change. A couple things drop down in cost, but a lot of more pseudo changes in points. Uh, a lot of formations involve fast attacks, and yeah, and now obviously, as I mentioned in a couple videos, you can't take Ravenwing as troops anymore, so they're in their fast attack slots, but there's the Ravenwing detachment, which is a little bit more viable than the Deathwing detachment. So, cool stuff there. So we'll start off with the Assault Marines. Uh, assault Marines, like they are in the, in the Space Marine Codex, they've gotten dropped down to 70 points for a squad of five. However, it's a pseudo drop, because if you like your Assault Marines with jump packs, it costs three points per jump pack, bringing them exactly back to their old 85 points. It's just good if you want to run Assault Marines without jump packs, then it's 15 points cheaper. And the reason why you'd want to run Assault Marines without jump packs is if you want to do like the Demi Company spam list, where two, two Demi Companies and you run two Assault Marine squads, one in each Demi Company without jump packs, you get a free land, uh, drop pod, Razorback, or Rhino. So you can give them a, a you know, Razorback with Twinlink Heavy Bolters or upgrade them to like a Twinlink Glass Cannon. Pretty nasty stuff. It helps to get you free stuff in the double Demi Company list. Most of the time you'll run uh, Assault Marines with jump packs though, so it just brings them right back to the 17 points each per model, 85 points per squad. You know. And obviously they're a Space Marine, Weapon Skill Plus Skill 4, Strength Toughness 4, Initiative 4, 1 Wound, 1... Uh, one attack, but of course, you, the way you normally run them, you know, chainsword, pistol, they get an extra attack. Leadership eight, three up save. Uh, the war gear, bolt pistol, chainsword, frag grenades, crack grenades. Special rules, nation of fear, combat squads, and grim resolve. You can include up to five additional space marines for 14 points each. Jump packs for three points per model. Up to two space marines may replace their bolt pistols with a flamer and plasma pistol. The big one in this one, which I believe it happened in the Space Marine Codex as well as the Eviscerator. Uh, for every five models, one model may replace its Bolt Pistol and Chainsaw with an Eviscerator, which is a uh, Strength Times 2, AP 2, Melee Armor Bane, two-handed unwieldy. So that's pretty cool. Helps, you know, them. It's kind of like a Power Fist, but uh, two of them could have them. Pretty nasty stuff. For 25 points each, you can give them a Veteran Sergeant for 10. Pretty much straightforward stuff. And if it doesn't take Jump Packs, the squad can take a Drop Pod. Razorback or Rhino. Cool. Up next, and then, oh, by the way, another thing I should mention is all the Ravenwing squads got their names changed, but that's okay. So now we have Ravenwing Bike Squad. And this is, it could be the Biker, the Sergeant, the Veteran Sergeant, or an Attack Bike. Um, but there's also the Ravenwing Attack Bike Squad. It's kind of funny. So, uh, bikes are obviously a weapon skill plus skill 4, strength 4, toughness 5, because they're on bikes. Uh, one wound, initiative 4, one attack. Leadership 8, 3-up save. Uh, the Veteran Sergeant, of course, has an extra attack and an extra leadership. And that's it. They each have Bolt Pistol or Chain Sword. They only have one thing, because they're holding onto the bike with the other hand. Heavy Bolter, on the attack bike only. Uh, frag Grenades, Crack Grenades, Space Marine Bike, Teleport Homer. Uh, special Rules, Nation of Fear, Combat Squads, Grim Resolve, Hit and Run, Raven Wing, which once again lets them reroll their Jing saves and Scout. You include up to three additional Raven Wing bikers for 25 points each. Up to two Raven Wing bikers may each take one of the following. Uh, sorry, up to two Raven Wing bikers can take one of the following from the special weapons list, which of course, you know, uh, Flamer, Melt Gun, Grav Gun, Plasma Gun. Once again, the army got access to Grav weapons, which is cool. And uh, the Raven Wing Sergeant or Ve Raven Veteran Sergeant may take. Items for the melee weapons or ranged weapons lists can take melted bombs for 5 points. You can include an attack bike for 45 points. And the attack bike can replace its heavy bolter with a multi melter for 10 points. Cool. And then we have the Ravenwing Attack Bike Squadron. So this is just an attack bike. Um, so Ravenwing Attack Bike, once again, same stat line but an extra attack. So weapons to ballistics go 4. Strength 4, toughness 5 because being on a bike. 2 wounds, initiative 4, 2 attacks, leadership 8, 3 up save. They're on a bike. War gear, bolt pistol, heavy bolter, frag grenades, crack grenades, space marine bike, teleport homer. Special rules, nation of no fear, grim resolve, hit and run, 
Raven Wing Scout. That's cool. Options may include up to two additional Raven Wing attack bikes for 45 points each. Can replace their uh, heavy bolters with multi meltas for 10 points each. So, pretty cool standard stuff. That's say the same. Most of these uh, fast attack choices do not change in cost whatsoever. The Raven got slightly cheaper. I should have noted that. The Raven Wing got cheaper by, I think, five points per model. But uh, not too much of a change in their stat line. But they got five points cheaper. Yeah. Which is good. And uh, pretty much everything else stayed the same, other than the Nephilim Jet Fighter. But that's a pseudo drop as well. Next we have the Ravenwing Land Speeders. Uh, Ravenwing Land Speeder is Ballistic Skill 4, Armor 10 around, 2 hull points. It's a vehicle, fast skimmer, of course, because it's a Land Speeder. Warrior's Heavy Boulder. Uh, it's special rules. Now, this is consistent with the Space Marines Codex. They allowed. Um, Things to be taken in squadrons now. So you could take a squadron of land speeders, which if, if it, this unit includes at least three Raven Wing land speeders, it can move an additional six inches when moving flat out. And you can include up to, like, you can have five in a squad. So that's pretty cool. Deep Strike and Raven Wing, so it can reroll its Jink. You can include up to four additional Raven Wing land speeders for 50 points each. Uh, well, any Raven Wing land speeder may replace a heavy bolter with one of the following Heavy Flamer for free, Multi Melter for 10 points. Any Ravenwing Land Speeder may take one of the following. Heavy Bolter for 5, Heavy Flamer for 5, Multi Melta for 15, Assault Cannon for 20, and Typhoon Missile Launcher for 25. Cool. Good stuff. Up next, the Ravenwing Dark Shroud. A funny looking vehicle. You know, pimp my, uh, pimp my Land Speeder. Ravenwing Dark Shroud is uh, 80 points. I think it still used to be 80. Yeah, stay the same at 80. Uh, Warrior's Heavy Bolter. It's Ballistic Skill 4, Armor 10 around, 3 hull points as opposed to 2. You replace this Heavy Bolter with an Assault Cannon for 15, which is probably worth it. Special Rules, Deep Strike, Icon of the Old Caliban, which um, friendly units within the Dark Angels faction with 6 inches of one or more Ravenwing Dark Shrouds gain the Fear and Stealth Special Rules. That's cool. They used to gain Stealth, but now I think they gain Fear as well. So the Fear is new. Furthermore, Enemy units cannot fire Overwatch at friendly units with the Dark Angels faction that are within six inches of one or more Raven Wing Dark Shrouds at the start of the Assault Phase. So that's cool. So these are they're great support vehicles. So you basically give them, uh, you give guys around you stealth, which is cool, and they can't be Overwatched on, which is, can save the butts of your guys assaulting him. Now again, this the Codex is very defensive, but I think this combined with bikers will be really strong because bikes can jump in and out of Assault like no one's business since they have hit and run. Cool. Of course, it has Ravenwing, so it can reroll its Jink, Scout, and Shrouded. Up next, the Nephilim Jet Fighter. The Nephilim Jet Fighter got cheaper by 10 points. It's now 170 points, it used to be 180, but it's a pseudo drop because it used to have come base with a Laz Cannon, and now the Laz Cannon's up five points. It's a five point upgrade. So it technically, it went down five points if you want to run the Laz Cannon variant from Last Codex. Otherwise, it is 10 points cheaper, and you get the uh, Avenger Mega Bolter, which is 48-inch uh, range, Strength 6, AP4, Heavy 5. Cool. The Nephilim Jet Fighter is, of course, a uh, it's a flyer. This is a 4, armor 11 around, 3 hull points. War Gear, 2 Heavy Bolter, Avenger Mega Bolter, 6 Black Sword Missiles. Special Rules, Missile Lock, Raven Wing, Strafing Run, and Unrelenting Hunter. Missile Lock means a model with a special rerolls re-rolls fail to hit rolls when shooting any weapon that has the one-use-only special rule. And uh, if a model with a special rule is shooting a weapon that has both the one-use-only and blast special rules, that shot will instead scatter d6 rather than 2d6. So it helps you hit whatever you're hitting, which is good. Uh, Ravenwing Strafing Run, which just basically gives a better ballistic skill when shooting at stuff on the ground. And Unrelenting Hunter. When shooting at enemy vehicles, an Nephilim Jet Fighter can choose to treat any weapon destroyed result as an immobilized result instead. Which is cool. If you want to keep something there, really he's good. So that's an Nephilim Jet Fighter. As I said, got 10 points cheaper. Um, but if you want to run it with the, the Laz Cannon, it's a 5 point cheaper. Cool. Up next, the Ravenwing Dark Talon. Um, the Ravenwing Dark Talon is... The other flyer, but as hover, at least. That's cool. The Raven Dark Talon is 160 points. It used to be 160 as well. Yeah, it hasn't gotten down at all. And the Raven Dark Talon is Bliss Skill 4, armor 11 around, 3 hull points, vehicle, flyer, hover. 
It has two Hurricane Bolters, a Rift Cannon, and a Stasis Bomb. And the Rift Cannon is 18 in terrain, Strength 10, AP 2. Heavy 1, Blast, Blind, Rift Vortex. And Rift Vortex is, let me see. If any double is rolled when rolling for Scatter, for an attack made by this weapon, resolve the rest of the attacks as if the weapon had the Vortex special roll. So it stays in play. Cool. Um, it also has a Stasis Bomb, which is... Uh, strength 4, AP 5, Bomb 1, Large Blast, Vast Stasis, Anomaly, 1 use only. So let's find out what Large Anomaly and, and uh, Stasis mean. Vast Stasis Anomaly. Uh, any unit hit by one or more of these weapons with special rule reduces weapon skill and initiative to, by 3 to a minimum of 1 until the end of the turn. Furthermore, if a model suffers one or more unsafe wounds from this weapon, it must pass a separate initiative test for each wound suffered or be removed from play as a casualty. That's pretty strong, you know? It helps destroy stuff that you're about to assault. And if they fail an initiative test, remove from casualty. Hello, orcs, necrons. This will be hilarious against necrons. Because it drops necrons to, like, weapon skill one, initiative one. And then it also... Their initiative sucks. It's two. Same with orcs. So you can maybe get lucky and get removed from play. Special rules, Ravenwing and Strafing Run. Good stuff. And then finally, the Ravenwing Black Knights. And these guys are my favorite uh, part of the fast attack choices, are the Ravenwing Black Knights. I think they're the strongest part. Other than maybe some of the Jet Fighter rules, which are cool. But um, the Ravenwing Black Knights are really good because, A, you can take large squads of them. They can be up to squads of 10. B, they have Skilled Rider. So they have a 3-up Jink, and they have, on top of that, Ravenwing, which gives them a 3-up rerollable. That's pretty good. Yeah. So, Ravenwing Black Knights, weapon skill plus skill 4, strength 4, toughness 5, 1 wound, initiative 4, 2 attacks, leadership 9, 3-up save. And the Huntmaster gets nothing extra. Same stat line. Uh, War Gear, Bolt Pistol, Plasma Talon, Corvus Hammer, Frag Grenades, Crack Grenades, Teleport Homer, Special Rules, Nation Lone of Fear, Grim Resolve, Hit and Run, Ravenwing, Scout, Skilled Rider. You include up to seven additional Ravenwing Black Knights for 40 points each. Now, did they change in cost? No. Yes, they did. Sorry, they went down two points each. They used to be 42 points, I think, and now they're down to 40 points. For three, for every three models in the unit, one Ravenwing Black Knight replaces Plasma Talon with a pla Ravenwing Grenade Launcher, which uh, has a Frag Shell Fire, Crack Shell Fire, Rad Shell, Poisoning, st Stasis Shell, so it has, you know, tons of different options. Strength 3, AP 6, Rapid Fire. Strength 6, AP 4. Strength 3, you know, it's cool. I wouldn't really normally take it, but it's cool. The Ravenwing Huntmaster may replace his Corvus Hammer with a power weapon. Probably worth it. Ravenwing Huntmaster may take Melted Bombs for 5 points. Cool. So that's it. Those guys are cool. Because they are going to survive. Since they have, um... They have Skilled Rider. Giant squads of them. Skilled Rider with re-rollable 3-up. Jink. That's pretty good. So that's the fast attack in a nutshell. Now, obviously, I didn't cover the dedicated transports because I covered them in the previous vi in the troops video. So now we'll go to the formations because it should be worth mentioning that almost all these fast attack choices are in the formations. And some of them have bonuses. So first of all, um, assault marines are a required component, and only assault marines of the fast attacks are a required component of the Battle Demi Company. So you need to take them if you want to take the Battle Demi Company. Now it's up to you if you want to take them with jump packs or not. If you want a double Demi Company and they don't have jump packs, they get free vehicles. Pretty cool stuff. And then there's a lot of other uh, formations with them. So there's a Ravenwing Attack Squadron, which is one Ravenwing Bike Squad or one Ravenwing Attack Bike Squad and one unit of Ravenwing Land Speeders or one Ravenwing Land Speeder Vengeance. And the restrictions, the unit of Ravenwing Land Speeders may only include one model. Uh, special rules, attack squadron. If the, land, if the Ravenwing Land Speeder or Ravenwing Land Speeder Vengeance from this formation scores one or more hits upon an enemy unit in the shooting phase, then all models from this formation's Ravenwing Bike Squad or Ravenwing Attack Bike Squad add one to their ballistic skill when shooting at the same target for the rest of the phase. Could help if you really want to pick a part of squad. Cool. It gives them all scout which most of them already have, and summon the Deathwing. 
Friendly units composed entirely of models in the Deathwing Special Rule do not scatter when they deep strike. So long as the first model is placed within 12 inches of the model from this formation, for this to work, the model from this formation must have been on the battlefield at the start of the turn. So again, it, it promotes the synergy that if you're running Deathwing now, you don't want them to scatter. Now, usually they have a teleport homer, so they don't scatter within 6 inches, but this one gives you a bonus they don't scatter within 12 inches. So you can move these guys where you want them and turn 2, if they come in turn 2, hopefully, if you're running the, you know, the Deathwing Assault, uh, they land where they want. Promotes synergy. Good stuff. Next, we have the Ravenwing Support Squadron Formation. It is composed of one unit of Ravenwing Land Speeders and one unit of Ravenwing Land Speeder Vengeance or Ravenwing Dark Shroud. Restrictions. The unit of Ravenwing Land Speeders must include at least three models in this case. Special Rules. Grim Resolve, Interceptor, Raven Shield, which is cool. Uh, when an enemy unit declares a charge against a friendly unit, with the Raven Shield uh, special rule, models from this formation within 24 inches of that friendly model can choose to fire Overwatch against the charging unit, even though vehicles cannot normally fire Overwatch. Template weapons can only use the Wall of Death special rules if they are within 6 inches of the friendly unit. Remember that a unit can only fire Overwatch once per turn. So, if these guys are up in front, and remember your guys fire, if you take the normal formations, these guys fire full ballistic skill. And if you don't take them from the normal formation, they fire ballistic skill two, and sometimes three. So that's pretty nasty. So you can have, you'd be a fool to assault these things. Because if they get assaulted, everything around them, they're like super tau, can fire overwatch at whatever's doing that. That's pretty cool. Strafing run and support squadron. All vehicles in the formation must form a single vehicle squadron, as described below. Uh, however, it counts as separate things for kill points. Cool. Up next, we have the Ravenwing Silence Squadron. And the Silence Squadron is two Nephilim Jet Fighters and one Dark Talon. Restrictions, none. Uh, special Rules Capture Run, which, when making a bombing run with the Stasis Bomb from, uh, from this formation's Ravenwing Dark Talon, do not roll for the scatter. The Stasis Bomb hits automatically. Furthermore, any models that suffer any unsaved wound, or unsa sorry, an unsaved wound, from the stasis bomb must roll two dice and pick the highest result when taking their initiative test to see if they are removed as casualties, i.e. neck runs are dead. In missions that use victory points to determine the winner, the Slay the Warlord secondary objective is worth D3 additional po victory points to the controlling player at the end of the game if the enemy warlord was removed as casualty as a result of capture run. So if you drop it on the opponent's you know, orc um, warlord or necron warlord, even technically anybody else, you know, you basically, um, anybody, you, you drop it on them, and on a six they die, right? They're just removed from play, because you fail any initiative test on a six. So, good stuff. And you have D3 additional points, D3 points. And they also have fighter escort. When making reserve rolls, make a single roll for the entire formation. You know, cool. I think you can choose to re-roll it as well. Uh, which you can choose to re-roll. On a successful reserve roll, all units of formation arrive from reserve. Good. Um, and that's it. So those are the formations that really pertain to the fast attack choices. But there's a lot of them, as you can see. So to sum it up, most things didn't change in costs. We got slight tweaks. Ravenwing bikes went down two points each. The Nephilim Jet Fighter went down ten points. But if you want to get, bring back the last cannon, it got five points cheaper. Uh, Assault Marines got, ten, got three points cheaper each. But if you want to give them jetpacks, they are right back to their normal costs. And it's up to you. Like, this is where, this is probably where the codex shines, is the stuff in this fast attack. Because um, it's up to you. If you want to debate between, you know, like, that's, as I said, the big question in this codex is, is it worth taking over Space Marines? Where the Space Marines have access to the land, uh, sorry, the uh, Ravenwing, Storm Raven, and Storm Talents, versus these guys have access to the Dark Shroud and the Phylum Jet Fighters. And then there's going to be the huge debate between White Scars, who have Skilled Rider, and um, they're pretty nasty and they're slightly cheaper, versus Ravenwing, who have now Ravenwing, and they get a better Jinx save, because it's 4-up re-rollable, and in some cases with the um, really good um, the Black Riders, you know, they get Skilled Rider and Ravenwing, which makes them pretty hilarious to stop. A squad of 10 of them 
unless you get hit with something that ignores cover, hopefully you don't go against the triple Vindicator list, um, you just fly around the battlefield surviving the whole time. It'd be pretty fun. So this is probably where the strength lies, because it's not in the elites with the Deathwing, and it's not really in the HQs. And the heavy support is pretty much identical to Space Marines in every way. Yeah, pretty much identical in every way to Space Marines. So it's up to you. This is where the possible strength of the Codex lies. Um, yeah, I think that's a fair thing to say. So what do you think? What do you think of the new Dark Angels Codex? What do you think about the fast attack choices? Do you have anything else to add? Do you agree? Do you disagree with what I say? Let's create a discussion about Dark Angels. Let's create some good lists. And let's not let this codex stop us from having a great time and, uh, and enjoying Dark Angels, man. First chapter, you know. Gotta love Dark Angels. I love Dark Angels. And I'll be still playing Dark Angels. But I just... The, number, the, the amount of reasons to play Dark Angels, I believe, is decreasing. Other than they have really cool fluff, look cool. And there are some bonuses in this codex, but yeah. So, thank you very much for watching. Leave a comment in the comment section down below what you think. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so. And until next time, this is Jay saying, happy painting.